February 3rd, 1975, and I am reading for the record a number of letters that were sent by Benjamin H. Gorelick. That's Rabbi Benjamin H. Gorelick, G-O-R-R-E-L-I-C-K, to his wife. The first one that I have here is dated December 3rd, 1945. It reads, quote, What a day it was yesterday. I cannot get over it. We had about 250 children who we fed, feasted, entertained, and provided with enough chocolate and toys to take home as delightful souvenirs. We had them with us for three hours, and we sang and had real Hanukkah fun galore. Period. We had about 50 soldiers who assisted and who were thrilled looking at and seeing these children, period. I spoke to the children in Yiddish, period. New paragraph. Then I went as a guest to another festival celebration at a home consisting not of children but of young men from 16 to 30, period. This group presented a variety program in Hebrew and Yiddish, depicting life in the ghettos, comma, in the concentration camps, comma, and in hope giving Eretz Israel. period. It was remarkable how well it was done, especially since all of them have for five years been away from getting anything, away from anything that is Jewish except Sarot, and since none ever had artistic or dramatic experience, period, a Palestinian soldier who has been living with them and teaching them for a month has been responsible for this achievement. They are a group of 50 young people who hope to go to Eretz Yisrael and in the meantime try to rehabilitate themselves in every way. A meal was served after the program and I was sitting next to a young man from Latvia who told me tales about his experiences for over three years in concentration camps that made my hair stand on edge, and yet he is so even-tempered and willing to live in full hope for the future. December 4th, 1945. Last night, I went on a mitzvah mission to deliver some money for a very interesting purpose. When Rabbi Isaac Klein was here, he interested himself in a case of a young refugee girl who had a good voice and whom experts recommended for an opera career upon sufficient training. He encouraged her to begin her musical education and helped her in many ways. Now he sent me a hundred dollars to help her get a piano. I took the money over to her and found that she already had a piano. Incidentally, I gave her $25 towards that end sometimes before. Just the same, I gave her Isaac's money so that she can use it to pay for instruction. I appreciated it in appreciation, comma, she sang for me and my assistant one Hebrew song. I was very much impressed with her singing. I just received a message that Rabbi Luxstein from New York is coming to Belgium for a visit next week. He is coming on the rep as a representative of the JWB, and I will have to take him around. December 8, 1945. While in Reims, I did some good in another form. I picked up a large supply of kosher meat and other Jewish foods which a Jewish chaplain received from the States, and on the way back I stopped at a kosher Jewish orphanage and unexpectedly made them happy. I also picked up a sizable amount of other Jewish articles such as tefillin, talisim, talisim, uh, prayer books, etc., which I will distribute among civilians in Belgium. This orphanage, orphanage, which I visited on my way back, is under the auspices of Brit Chalutzim Datim. Shmuel Kaplan, 
shortly known as Bet Chet Dalid, which is supported by the Mizrahi. In addition to 32 orphans, there are also about 30 Hachshara boys and girls who are awaiting to go to Palestine. I spent about two hours with them, and these two hours passed like ten minutes. I could not talk and see all there was to see, to something and see. There is room there for another hundred orphans which will come in soon. December 8th, Motzei Shabbat. I just returned from a Shalosh Sudot at my favorite orphanage, where I spent about three hours in wonderful association with children and in a spirit of joyous Jewishness. The program consisted of Mincha and then the meal after which we had Zmirot Galore and Palestinian songs, and I spoke to the children briefly as well as taught them some new songs. In short, we had a grand time. Now I intend to spend the evening at home in solitude, reading, and relaxing. December 9th, 1945. As I told you in my last uh, letter, my last epistle, excuse me, I was going to Nam Namur, N-A-M-U-R, this morning, comma, which I did, and among my surprises was the discovery of five young Jewish chaplains who had just come from the States as replacements, period. They were waiting at an army depot for reassignment. One of them was Frank Goldenberg, my successor at Fort Benning, who gave me a, a grease from you and Ellie, uh, five of uh, five or six months ago. Period. I took three of the chaplains to an orphanage and then to Brussels. They were quite touched, both to see the children and Jewish life in Brussels. New paragraph. Among the five, two are seminary men, Frank, and one Meyer Abramowitz. They impressed me as very immature and quite flippant. Maybe I was that way, too, ten years ago, but still I cannot conceive of myself as such ever. December 12, 1945. I wrote to you about five Jewish chaplains who arrived here from the States and are awaiting assignment. Well, they are all on my neck and waste my time with nonsensical requests without realizing how busy I am. But you know me, I find time to take care of all. A Jewish chaplain by the name of Robert L. Katz just arrived in Brussels. He came from Rome where he had served as a successor of Izzy with the 85th Division. He may remain in Brussels and work with grave registration in charge of military cemeteries in this area. In between entertaining Jewish chaplains, I've got to find some time for civilians and for the army too, but I managed to find it. December 13th, 1945. This has been an uneventful day so far. It is just after lunch and I spent most of the morning schmoozing with Kaplan, Chaplain Katz. I did it because he was in and I had to keep him company and entertained. I sent him out on a sightseeing tour this afternoon so I am so I can turn to do my own work. This is December thirteenth again. Honey, it does not look as if I am coming home so soon. The situation is all topsy turvy. We have literally hundreds of chaplains in Europe who are doing nothing and replacements are coming in from the States and yet very few are sent back home. December 16, 1945. I am writing this on a Sunday night, and I can report to you that I have carried out my schedule for today as announced in yesterday's letter. I went to Namur as planned, held my service, met the Jewish community, visited the religious Hachshara, and was very much impressed 
with their hard and idealistic life, although most of them were at work and could not see them, and then joined another couple into wedlock. I even had a Catholic priest at the ceremony. This is the well-known Father Andre, who saved many Jewish children during the occupation and considered December 18th, 1945. <clears throat> you ask, what is the JDC doing in Brussels and Belgium? Well, I hope that you neither yourself nor anyone else thought for one moment that I, with your aid, have been able to do all that is to be done for Belgium Jewry. There are about 25,000 Jews in Belgium. A good thousand need aid of all sorts, which is chiefly supplied by the joint. First take the orphans. There are 2,000 of them. And together with the supervising personnel, have a budget of about uh, $200,000 a year. About one quarter of it is provided by the Belgium government, the rest by the JDC. The JDC conducts about three trade schools, provides with immediate material aid to recently patri repatriated refugees, offers assistance to Jews who are passing through and are awaiting shipment to other countries. Supposedly the poor with medical help and food, oh, supports the poor with medical help and food until they are able to get work conducts a legal department to help obtain rights of residence for non-Belgium Jews. It is doing a lot, not too perfectly, in parentheses, believe us, but Jewish life is so full of confusion and tension that it is a day-to-day -day proposition. The head of the JDC work here is a certain Miss Margolis, from whom I will get a report soon. She's an able social worker and does a marvelous job. The question therefore is natural. Why do I want your packages and other aid? Well, presumably to supplement in places where JDC is too slow and the need is urgent. Secondly, clothing are so hard to get here for money that the JDC cannot get enough from the states to fill the need. And thirdly, to help such individuals who do not receive aid from JDC and in my judgment are worthy of assistance. Your work has been of invaluable aid to supplement JDC work, but it is a drop in the bucket. However, I want you to stop the project immediately, first because the JDC is, not getting, is now getting more and more clothing directly from the United States. Second, I do not expect to remain here in Brussels for much longer than six weeks and I have no one else to entrust it on. Thirdly, if you keep it up much longer at the rate you are going, the Jewish Welfare Fund in Albany may suffer. So this is a good point to stop. If you have not mailed the money to me from Etta Friedman, mail it at once. I can use it well for worthy purposes. But please cease getting additional clothing Whatever you have, you may mail at once to me directly to the address I sent you, but no more. December 20th, 1945. Last night after writing my letter to you, I carried out a mitzvah of Bikur Cholim. I visited the assistant directors, director of JDC in Belgium, a certain Miss Vulcan who had been hurt in an automobile accident. She is feeling much better already, but my visit was much appreciated. While in her apartment, I had a chance to discuss with her the work of the JDC. This organization spends approximately $200,000 monthly, and it aims especially to get the Belgium Jews to assume this, their own responsibility sooner or later. This money is spent firstly for orphans on this or displaced children. There are about 1,500 of these at present in Belgium. Six to 700 are special Jewish, are in special Jewish orphanages, and the rest are uh, divided between other institutions and private homes. 
Since the JDC assumed its work here more than a year ago, after the liberation, 1,500 orphans have already been returned to parents, relatives, or guardians all over the world, including a hundred who went to Palestine. The great problem about these orphanages is this back is this of uh, is this lack of adequate and Jewishly trained personnel. Four Hachshara camps are subsidized and supported by JDC. Four thousand relief cases monthly and are being are and are being given money and clothing. Three free kitchens supply food daily to the, to needy. A number of homes for the aged are supported. A cooperative bank and loan bank have recently been started to help people in small businesses. There is a Department of Repatriation which helps former Belgium Jews to get back to Belgium from DP camps. An immigration section and a section which compiles lists of surviving Jews and attempts to bring together with their relatives and friends. This is a story in brief of JDC's burden. However, it is expected to be lessened soon because the Belgian government passed the law granting families who, whose heads have been deported for racial reasons and who, near came, who never came back 2,000 francs monthly. This amounts to about $50. Many Jewish families stand to profit from this law, and JDC money will thus be able to be spent in places of greater urgency. The hope is, of course, still strong that many Jews will be able to immigrate to Palestine, which will further be a source of reducing the burden of assistance.